In this short video, we'll be talking about some presentation strategies that you can use in your own presentations. So today, where we're going to talk about include organizing your content, crafting your narrative, presentation style, and speaking with confidence. This is the part of the presentation where I share with you where we're going. For your own presentation, the beginning is where you set up the context for your audience. Tell them where you're coming from and where you're headed. After a research project, we may find ourselves with some interesting results, or maybe some results that aren't so interesting. Your task when crafting a presentation is to determine what are the key components of your research. These are what you'll want to talk about in your presentation. With any research project, there's also information that's not always that unnecessary to include. If you have time, sometimes extra information can enhance your presentation. However, it can also slow you down or be counter-constructive to your goals. If possible, see if you can get a friend who isn't familiar with your research to give you feedback on whether the information you're including is too much or maybe too little. The same critical approach should be assumed for the use of subject jargon. Within a subject-specific area and field, we can become very familiar with the standard terms we use. When we transition into giving a presentation, we want to be especially aware of when we might be using terminology that's specific to our field and not something our audience would automatically know or understand. For example, if you needed to explain that we conducted all of our research trials using OCR software, we might also want to follow that up by explaining that OCR is an optical character recognition software and given a little description of how that was used. Crafting a narrative involves creating a story. Building the story behind your research is what helps you engage with your audience. If you're giving a presentation about your research, the good news is that your story is probably already there. You just have to choose the highlights. The research process itself can be your story. In crafting this, think about where you started and where you ended up. What happened? What did you discover along the way? What pieces of that story would be significant for your audience to know? As you practice your presentation, be aware of your pace and how quickly you're moving through content. You want to sound energized as you move through your content, but don't lose your audience by going too quickly. Showing your passion for a topic will naturally make it more interesting for your audience. Demonstrating your interest in a topic can be contagious and spill over into others' understanding of it. Don't be afraid to show your passion. Being conversational can help you think about your audience as participants in your discussion and might help you conceptualize your presentation as a discussion instead of just you standing up in front of a group of people. Amy Cuddy is a social psychologist who studies body language and has presented for TED Talks about her research. The core of her findings is that how you hold your body affects how you view yourself and influences your confidence. Therefore, even if you don't feel confident about your presentation, how you hold your body can influence how you feel about it. I would recommend watching her entire talk. Some things to think about when you're standing in front of a group are to stand tall. Keep your shoulders back. Don't let them curl forward. The rule about hands is that you don't want to put them in your pockets or cross them over your chest. That might make you look unfriendly. But if keeping your arms at your sides is pretty difficult for you to do, you might want to try clasping your hands behind your back. Keeping your chin up will also allow you to focus on projection, making sure you're speaking loudly enough, and keep your air passage open. Don't forget to breathe. Often when we're nervous, we forget to breathe. However, the simple act of taking a breath can calm our nerves and focus our attention. When it comes to practice, you really can't over-practice. The more times you run through your presentation, the more comfortable you'll become. Some strategies you might try include standing while you practice. This will make you closer to when you'll need to actually be doing for your real presentation. Practicing in front of a mirror is good for a couple of things. It can give you an idea of what you look like while you're presenting, and it can give you an audience. Over-enunciating your words will help you speak more clearly. If you have a tendency to mumble, taking time for this step is especially important. 
Practicing hand gestures before your presentation can make them feel more natural. Make sure to time yourself. A good presentation fits well within a time frame, but doesn't compromise clarity. And breathe. If public speaking isn't your forte, think about presenting as you just sharing a story. In some capacity, that's really what you're doing. You're just sharing a story. And finally, presenting can be fun. With enough practice, presenting gets easier. Once you know your content, you can focus on making it interesting and have fun with your presentation.